So the mailman came, uh, delivered the uh, PC boards. I think m -Side Dog was hoping for dog treats, but uh, anyway, let's take a look to see what we got. Uh, there we go, they're always packaged the same way. Quantity five, layers two. Okay, let's see here. They're always vacuum packed. And I do require a sharp knife to get them out. All right. Did we get five or do we get a bonus? Now I got five. Um, these are the silent key filter. Looks just like the layout. I mean, you stare at the screen so so long, you kind of memorize the board. And when you get it, you go, yeah, well, that's exactly what it looked like. <laughs> it looks exactly like the CAD program. That's so nice about these things. Um, when you run the CAD program and you run a Gerber, um, you run it through a Gerber viewer, I mean, you can, you can confidently say, that's what I'm going to get. So if you take some time and staring at the Gerber, make sure you haven't made any mistakes. I mean, it is what you get back. So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence, but uh, yeah, this will be nice. Um, we have a low pass filter, a, a band pass filter, and a band reject filter. Uh, and a high pass filter. Yeah, there we go. Low pass. Okay. Maybe I haven't memorized it. <laughs> Low pass, high pass, band pass. But I, I recognize all the shapes because uh, that's what I was focused on, all of the routing and stuff. So, yeah, I think we should uh, build this thing and try out all the different filters. All right. Now that we have the nice PC boards back from PCB Way, let's uh, go ahead and load one up and give it a try. Um, I've gone ahead and done that off camera. So we have one right here. It's all loaded up, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, power comes in at the bottom and uh, you're ready to go. So yeah, let's give it a try. All right, we've got the board hooked up here. We'll be taking a look at the different outputs. Um, we are gonna be sending in a swept uh, signal into uh, the input and look at the output. So um, we have, uh, our schematic here, I don't know if you can read, that might be blown out, but um, these are all from the ARR, ARRL handbook. I think it was a 2013, no, I don't remember. Anyway, um, if you go to the AR, I'm sure it's still in there. The ARL handbook has a section on filters and it gives this uh, section here uh, on different types of um, cell and key filters and so uh, this is the circuit that I have, and I've used the, they give you all the equations, so if you want to change it to the, whatever frequencies that you want, it has all the equations here. And then it gives an example, and I, I've just used the example that they use. So it's supposed to be a 2700 uh, hertz low-pass filter, all right? So yeah, there we go. It looks like a low-pass filter. I'm sweeping between 10 hertz and 10 kilohertz, and uh, we have a nice, uh, a nice sweep there. It's a logarithmic in, uh, in X. So uh, that is looking that is looking good. Now the next um, the next filter is a high pass filter, and the example is for a 250 hertz high pass. So I think we're going to have to change our sweep a bit. Um, let's see here. What is the other values? 500 and 800. Yeah, we're going to change. We'll have to change the uh, sweep value. So let's go ahead and do the high pass. It's supposed to be a 250 hertz high pass. So let's go here to the uh, high pass section. And put on our input. Oops. Everything wants to fall off today. There we go. All right. So it is doing high pass stuff. Uh, let's Got a higher amplitude here, and it has a has a bit of a ringing in it. So uh, we can discuss the values. There's a two resistors that you can change to modify the damping in a Salen key. Um, but here we're starting at uh, 10 hertz, and we're going to 10 kilohertz. So it's supposed to be a 250 hertz high pass, and there you go, right at 250, it, it's going up. And we have this overshoot there. So like I said, um, there are some 
there are some values to change for that. Um, I'll let you read about that. <laughs> okay, so that is our 250 high pass, and it's nice and flat out here in the band uh, on the pass band. Um, now we're going to go to a bandpass filter, which is 800, 800 hertz. Okay. And so let's go back down here so you can see. So this is the one that we just did. This is the, uh, this is the high pass. And, uh, you know, these are, these are pretty typical filters. Um, they are two, uh, two second order. I should say they're second order. They're, they're, um, they have two, two active components, okay? Either an L or a C is an active component. What does it mean to be an active component? Not really active component, but um, it's doing something to the, to the phase of the signal. Resistors never change the phase of the signal, but capacitors will change the phase and inductors will change the phase, and that will change the way uh, that things combine because you're you're not, you're not adding voltages, you're adding sinusoidal signals. And so when you add them, you have to take into account the phase. And that's why there's a whole bunch of math involved in these things to take care of the phase. Um, and we could talk about poles and zeros and uh, S and uh, polynomials and all that kind of stuff, but that's way over my head, so. <laughs> maybe someday, maybe someday. Um, Anyway, we're going to take a look at the bandpass now. The bandpass is an interesting architecture, uh, a little bit strange looking. But uh, this one is uh, optimized for 800 hertz, which would be a nice CW filter, right? Uh, and so let's, uh, let's move over to our bandpass. Uh, move here. Our bandpass, and there we go, having a... Amplitude's a little different. Put up the amplitude, and there's our there's our 800 uh, megahertz bandpass. Looks like it's pretty nice. And then uh, our last circuit is going to be a twin T notch filter, band reject filter. Uh, that's this one here, and we saw this before. Uh, I, I, I did another video on, on this type of architecture, but I've included it here because it's, it's all the four different types of, uh, all the four different types of Salen key. And so we will move to the band reject. Whoa. And my scope crypt is going to fall off. There we go. And we see that we have, oh, my scope probe is not cooperating. There we go. All right, so we're getting a little notch there. Now, if you remember my other video on notch filters, it took some tuning to make sure that the low pass and the high pass don't overlap too much. And it looks like they're overlapping too much here. And that's component selection, right? The values that they chose is probably okay, but the tolerancing of these components is such that probably doesn't come out perfect every single time. And in this particular case, you can see that it's actually uh, operating quite poorly. Um, I'm not sure which value is out, but um, 0 0.22, 0 0.44, that should be okay. R15, um, yeah, it probably just needs, it probably just needs a adjustment, a potentiometer in there to adjust that. And like I said, um, I have another video on, on notch filters and um, recommend you go look at that one because it's the same architecture, but um, it is here on the board. So uh, let's get some of these out of the way here so I can, we can stare at this board for a second. So if you want to play with sound key filters, this is a great board to do it with. Um, this is the low pass, the high pass, the band pass, and the band reject. And each connector is just in, ground, out, in, ground, out, in, ground, out, in, ground, out. And um, I've used quad uh, op amps. So you don't have to, if you just want to use this for one particular type, you don't need to load the whole board. You just load the, the op amp that you need. And I think dual op amps, there's much more variety in the types of op amps that you can use. So we could change these. These uh, currently are TLO82s. 
we could swap them into you know 5532s or you know some other type of some other type of device and see what the see what the performance is i think the only restriction for sound key filters is that you sort of want to have um good stability at unity gain although uh i'm not quite sure why <laughs> but i think i read that someplace once um but yeah there you go uh sometimes it's fine to hard it's sometimes hard to find the right capacitor values. Um, and so I've kind of faked it a little bit. A lot of the um, silent key filter designs are the two capacitors are the same value or one is double the other one. And so whenever I had like a, a one and a, and a double one, uh, like, like down here, I think the band reject has a single, single value and then a double value, right? It's like... A, these are 0.02 and this one was 0.04. So I paralleled the same capacitor to get the 0.04. So I think that makes the ratio better. If you have tolerancing issues, I think uh, doubling those two capacitors instead of trying to find another 0.04 somewhere, I think that's probably a little more, uh, probably gets you in the ballpark faster. I should say it that way, maybe. Um, and that's what I had in my junk bin. So I was just going to use what I had in my junk bin. 